is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. God is good. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Welcome to this virtual worship service within the sanctuary of the First Congregational Church in Williamsburg, Massachusetts. In this time of being apart because of the deadly virus, we are delighted that you are with us. We hope that you are safe and well and staying safe in this troubling time. The scriptural word of God is a brilliant flashlight beam shining towards our feet. Illumining our darkened path on a moonless night. Without the word of light, we would stumble, we would stagger, we would trip, and we would fall, and hunker down in fear of things that go bump in the night. We are here virtually as a people seeking God's light. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for your word that equips us to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. It is our desire and privilege to hear your word, receive it, and respond to it faithfully. Where our desire falters, we ask for courage. Where our will is weak, we ask for strength. Speak to us, we pray, the word of encouragement, of conviction, and of teaching for you alone know the depths of our hearts. Amen. Our scripture reading is from 2 Timothy 3, verses 10 through 17. And Paul wrote, Now you have observed my teaching, my conduct, my aim in life, my faith, my patience, my love, my steadfastness, my persecutions, and suffering things that have happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra. What persecutions I have endured, yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. Indeed, all who want to live a godly life in Christ will be persecuted, but the wicked people and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving others and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you have learned it, and from, from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you in salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful in teaching for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. Thus ends our reading for this morning. This is the second of our four-part series focusing on some of the aspects of the legacy that we still live with, the legacy from the pilgrims' landings 400 years ago. We will begin today with William Bradford and his wife, Dorothy May, having survived the ocean voyage of the Mayflower and the deprivations of the early years in the Plymouth settlement. In his famous book of Plymouth Plantation, Bradford wrote, the Puritan reformers labored to have the right worship of God and discipline of Christ established in the church according to the simplicity of the gospel without the mixture of men's inter inventions and to have and be ruled by the laws of God's word dispensed in these, those offices by those offices of pastors, teachers, and elders, etc. according to the scripture. In this rather long sentence, William Bradford expresses the pilgrims' identity as a people of the book. He focuses on their attention to the Bible, which was now available for everyone to read. This defined them as the most ardent of Protestants, as they embodied what both Martin Luther and John Calvin had claimed as the right of every person to a direct, personal relationship with the Word of God. The pilgrims believed that each person's spiritual journey was in God's hands, not the church's. Yet at the same time, they also believed that a communion of believers could enrich everyone's understanding and help correct his or her living with faith. 400 years later, we are still the people of the book. 
focusing on the written and spoken word. Now, how are we doing with that? Yeah, how are we doing with that? Do you read the Bible regularly or listen to what is read during the worship services only? Do you think of the Bible as the Word of God spoken long ago and that's it, and it's done and over with? Or do you hear God still speaking in it? How do the scriptures inform your spiritual, social, political experiences? How does scripture inform our church's commitment to a larger community in human kind? The pilgrims turn to the New Testament epistles to guide them in establishing their faith community in Plymouth. There they heard God speaking to them. So one of the most important things we learn from this is to ask and to try to answer this question. Where do we hear God speaking to us? in and beyond the scriptures. And that's our question for this week. Where do we hear God speaking to us in and beyond the scriptures? Amen. Great and faithful God, truth seems to be a rare commodity in our world today. Lies, half-truths, and misinformation are defended and justified, while truth-telling in the public arena as well as in our private lives is often criticized and frequently punished. Against that background, your word stands as a beacon of truth that is timeless, sure, and trustworthy. We thank you that your word is new and fresh each time we read it, that it remains relevant no matter how much our world changes, that it is a reliable witness to your ongoing presence and activities in our lives. For all this, we give thanks in the name of Jesus, who taught us this prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen.
this worship service with a click of a mouse or a tap on the screen. Go forth in the light and the love of God. Be mindful that God is still speaking through the scriptures, through the actions of faithful people, through your actions. God is with you.